You've been working in wildlife telly for a while now. Why do you think it's taken so long to, to get a UK fish film sorted? Um, Put you on the spot. I, I think there is a common idea that um, to find exotic wildlife, you've got to go a long way away. And if you, if you think that, you know, we live, we live on a globe. I mean, there are people in other countries who actually think that the British Isles is, is, is exotic. You know, people come from <laughs> other, par other parts of the world to, you know, to go to the Scottish Highlands or, uh, you know. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier, though, there, there is, I, I think the whole thing about fish is very, um, there is an absence in, in, in wildlife TV, which is this, this technical issue of the difficulty of, of filming them. So there is just so, you know, the quantity of, of anything, anything about fish of any description is particularly river fish, because I think um, what's nice about this film, it was a mixture of, uh, of coastal fish, but also rivers. But rivers tend to get, a, a, you know, very um, neglected. And with the programs that I've done, we just hit on this, uh, you know, this, this way of showing fish, which was instead of going to the fish most of the time, we'll we'll bring the fish, I'll bring the fish to me using a line. And um, some people, well, you can classify those as, as fishing films, but we also intended them to be natural history films because that's the only way you're gonna see a lot of these, uh, a lot of these creatures. So a, a line was my, my sampling tool. Um, but finding fish is hard, again. I mean, you've you know, three years to, to, to make this. I mean, you've been doing other things as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's aged me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's been good. But uh, what's interesting though, I mean, again, just, just from my own experience, I, I think to, to put something on television, um, fish were considered to be quite a minority interest. And, and when, um, when I started doing it, there's this idea about, is, is there a way of, of showing fish in a way that, so obviously you've got anglers who will sit and they'll, they'll watch fish but is it going to be of interest to anybody else? Mm. And I think uh, if you do it in a certain way, well, if you get it wrong, then no, nobody likes it, you know, because it's, <laughs> you know, you're just losing, you know, if you start talking too much about the, the technicality. Size 18 of, hook exactly, and two then, then pound one filament. Yeah. So, but what really surprised us was that um, in, in America, where they did a lot of research, you know, they, 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 tend to, they tended to find that maybe half the people who watched the programs that I did, ha half were anglers, half were not, you know, pe including people who had absolutely no interest in themselves going fishing. Um, likewise, age ranges, you know, from the, from the very old to the very young, and also a split you know, male, female. So I think it's really, I think it's almost a circular argument. It's almost one of those things, as you, as you said, you know, you were told nobody's interested. And that's because it's never been tried. But as soon as you, you put the right kind of thing in front of people, you, you'll be surprised. So I think as well as being seen itself, hopefully this will get the ball rolling because um, you know, there's more drama down there. I oh, mean, you know. This isn't the half of it. Yeah, right, there's a so, lot more. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this, could, this could be the beginning of something. Hopefully. Well, I'll open it up to you guys. So hopefully there's one or two questions, whether for me, Jeremy, or what time the pub opened, or I don't know, whatever you want to ask, but if we go, uh, that chap with the black shirt, sorry, I'm just going to point and say what you look like. So, <laughs> I've actually got one for both of you. So for you, Jack, I've got one. What was the hardest fish for you to film? Which one was the soft? Which one was the one that was like, I've got one, I really want to film it, but it's being elusive. Yeah. Um, hardest fish to film. I, I do get asked this. I generally make up a different answer for every time someone asks me. Um, but but barbel are tough, actually. I mean, we did a whole sequence on barbel, so that that was three years of that of going out each year, getting it. And barbel, if you're not particularly into fish, they're they're quite a common fish, but they're difficult to find rivers that are clear that have them in. So I live near the Trent in Nottinghamshire, so we've got a lot of barbel, but there aren't many rivers that are clear where you can film them. So everyone thinks it's the rare stuff, but the rare stuff, because it's rare, often is studied, so you go, that's where you find it, off you go. But the common stuff is actually harder to film, so barbel were, were pretty tricky. Yeah. Well, um, what was, um, um, obviously, we know that you go around the world with all the big fish, I guess, but as a British fish, what's your favourite? That's <laughs> the thing we never see you fishing for. 
So it's not, not a viral species. Which is the one that's really, oh, 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 you know, every angler's got one. What's yours? Yeah. Um, Interesting one for me because when I, when I decided to go to more you know quotes e exotic places, it was almost like a fork in the road, and I've almost got to the point where um, you know it's quite an admission. I almost know less about British fish than a lot of people here, and I'm starting to get back into it. Um, I mean, you know, the, the the programs that I made, a lot of them were, were into the, the you know the weird fish. I mean, I really enjoyed seeing that uh, that lamprey footage. I mean, that is really. Special. I believe that, I don't know, has that ever been seen on Not TV? Not River Lamprey, that's the first no. time they've been filmed. And again, that properly, was the one really. where you were sort of sitting by the phone, weren't you? Almost like the fireman I by the, by the, by the Rich, pole. Richard you know? here um, tonight? Richard from Natural Resource Wales? Is he here? No, he's hiding. Okay, but he, he was my contact. He just rang me up and said, you need to get here now. This is going to be done tomorrow. So I had to drive two and a half hours to North Wales from Nottingham, get in the river, hope they were still there film it and then they were gone within the next couple of days so timing yeah. isn't it again yeah. you know it, it's because um, again I think you know we're all familiar with seeing the you know the wonderful BBC shows and, and you know you sit down and you watch an hour of TV and as as was being said earlier you know the, the the budget that goes into them the time that goes into them so when you add the extra layer of complexity when it comes to filming underwater, I mean that's that's another reason probably is because it's an awful lot of work to get to get good stuff and put it together. Uh, this has been done on a, on a shoestring budget. Um, my favourite, I know, of late I've been getting into um, brown trout a little bit. You know, not not very big ones, but in a, in, in very small streams. So wild brown trout, and they're just you know they're just like little jewels. They're so pretty, very challenging to, to fish for. Um, so. Yeah, and it's a nice antidote to you know using quite delicate equipment, quite anti, you know, very different from the very agricultural stuff that I use a lot of the time. Thank you. Cool. Go on, Mark. Well, yeah, it's um, one of the issues with wildlife broadcasting is we have to get the public to love what they see, and particularly the fish, which are no neglected. At the same time, that can give the sense that we aren't in the middle of a biodiversity crisis. So what are your thoughts about how we get that balance right, that we, we give people the awe, but give people the motivation and, and the realisation, that particularly fish which integrate pressures across whole catchments, that they really are under threat? Mm -hmm. Well, I, well I think <laughs> the, the thing is it's quite a process, isn't it? Um, because as far as a lot of people are concerned, they, they have very little knowledge of what's under the water. And so it's, you know, there, there is this continuum. If you imagine a, a line, you know, at one, at one extremity, that, that, you know, there's, no, there's zero knowledge and you're trying to get them here, which is to care about it. And to do all of that in one program is quite, so I, you know, I think what you're trying to do, whatever you're doing, is just nudge them in, in that direction. And the, f the very first thing is, is making, making people aware of what's there. And again, from my experience, you know, what, what I would find, and again, I think we're, well, we're pushing a lot of hope on, on the younger generation, but you know, the, the, they were really receptive to um, knowing about this cool stuff that we've, you know, no, why has nobody ever heard us this, you know, told us about this before? So I think it is, the, you know, it is a process. It's, it's, it's knowing about them, and, and then you start to care about them, and then you start to wonder about, well, where can I focus my you know, my care, my outrage, or, or whatever. Um, so I think, and again, it's got it's, it's to be, it's got to be entertaining, hasn't it? If it's, if it's too heavy handed, if it's too sort of finger pointing, so it's... Um, it's how much carrot you know. and how much stick. And that's when, when, because I was really conscious of making this film, like, do I just do an hour fluff piece? Or do I do an hour of like, I was going to swear then, but we're all doomed. I can imagine the other version I was going to say. So I was like, well, <laughs> You know, how, how do you do it? And I went more towards fluff, purely a bit kind of what Jeremy says, you want to sort of inspire and get people interested rather than just, we're all doomed, give up. So it's sort of trying to, I mean, I'd love to do another one and be a bit harder hitting, but it was more trying to go for the beautiful stuff. Because it was really, I mean, one thing I'll make the point of, it was really difficult to find good places. Like, I mean, I've been doing this now 10 years, I've been a cameraman and when I first started, it was easier than it is now. So even in my short period, it's hard to find a good river, like a clear river with lots of fish with lots of weeds. It's tricky. 
It was really hard, because even when I started... That's very interesting, isn't it? Because I think, unfortunately, because you know, when you're making a TV programme, you want it to be stimulating, full of... Uh, so, you know, we... I mean, when I first went to the, the Amazon in 1993, I mean, one of the reasons I, you know, I went was because there's conflicting information. It's you, you, you read the newspapers and it's, it's all burning down. You look, at a, you look at a wildlife program and you're tripping over anacondas and jaguars. You know, it's just, it's, you, know, it's just, it, it's, you, you just go out there and, and it's, it's this sort of a real life zoo. But in fact, unfortunately, what you're doing through editing it, you are creating a false impression. And um, again, in the context of a program, how do you how do you come along at the end and go? That was all a lie. You know, I, I basically, you know, this was, you know, my average day was sitting there and not seeing anything. And, and but I think what's interesting is I think that you know, the, if you see this in the in the wider context of of everything that's coming to people at the moment, I think pe you know people are becoming aware that um, you know, wild ours, for example, although there is amazing wildlife. You know, the, it has been tremendously depleted, and um, we should be worried about that. We should be trying to do something about that. So I think it's, it's you know, it's slowly moving things in the right direction. Hmm. We've got any time? So let's go right for the back. Let's go for that dude. Uh, I read about the server for many years ago. That's the first time I've seen a film of one. Yeah. I'm just curious where you filmed it. <laughs> Yeah, an extinct fish that I filmed. Um, so, yeah, I cheated a little bit. I went to Belgium. So there's still... Uh, <laughs> so it's Britain's Hidden Fishers and a little bit of Belgium, technically. Um, so, yeah, they've got a hatchery. There's, there was a reintroduction programme um, in Belgium, and that's probably where we would get our fish from. So that's the closest to what we had. Um, and they, they were gung-ho. They were really happy for me to go over. So, yeah, I'm probably the only person mad enough to drive to Belgium and film an extinct cod but I did it, so um, yeah, so I'm, I'm fingers crossed that we'll get those back in a, in a couple of years. Uh, let's go for another one at the back, let's go for that guy. Yeah. Jack, is there a particular species you've not yet caught on film that you really love to, so um, your holy grail? Well, I've done, I've done every freshwater fish in the UK, not every single, every species, not every single freshwater <laughs> fish, that would <laughs> be a very long challenge. Um, I, we, we tried to get it for this, I, was re I really wanted to do basking sharks, it's a bucket list species for me. Like, if, you, if people could offer me to go anywhere around the world, I'd turn it all down for a basking shot. I'd, I'd love to see one. They're just a fish that is as big as a bus, and it swims around the UK. That's just bonkers, absolutely bonkers. So we did try. We went for a week to the Isle of Col, and has anyone seen the footage of them, the basking sharks in a circle? It was filmed off Island. That was the same week I was in Col. I was like, you bastards! <laughs> I was so gutted. Absolutely gutted, but um, yeah, we didn't see any, so that's wildlife filmmaking. But yeah, if I could film any fish in the world, it'd be a bas basker in the UK. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd lose my stuff <laughs> if I saw <laughs> if I saw a basking shark. Yeah, I'd love to. If we go, go, Megan. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Um, so I wanted to ask, how would you encourage people to, you know, encourage our MPs, encourage our wildlife conservation organisations to focus more on our waters and our fishes and their conservation? Um, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it is out of sight, out of mind. I think it is, like Jeremy was saying, like if, if you don't see it, you're not going to be interested in it, you're not going to love it. And like you say, you can look in your back garden and you can see a dozen different birds maybe and, and plants and, and insects, but fish are just out of sight, out of mind. So um, I think in some small way, footage like this is, is great to showcase. Oh, Dom, Dom's piping in. Go on, Dom. No, around the country, the filthy state of our rivers is now the second on the list only behind the NHS and the message is getting through but it's something everyone can do in the run up to the election. Contact your MP, watch their stance, what are they actually doing? 
don't know how many voting you can check this stuff, but mm -hmm. we've got a huge opportunity coming up. You can support wild fish, our organisation. We're taking the government to court over the sewage plan that they've come up with, which is completely inadequate. We are campaigning against salmon farming, which is through um, parasites and pollution, <coughs> threatening our salmon. So su support organisations like, 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 like ours. We are making, we are attempting to make, it, make, make a big difference. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> And I think also it's, it's um, to, to make people aware that fish aren't just a, a thing, um, a sort of a closed system. They, they live in the water. The water is important to, you know, what affects the fish is the invertebrates. The invertebrates also affect the birds. Um, they've just had the RSPB big garden bird watch recently and, and, and what they're finding there is numbers of birds is, is greatly reduced. Um, it's making it, I think, relevant to everybody as well. And I think, uh, you know, just looking at the crazy uh, swings in climate around the world at the moment, uh, drought in California that's now being followed by you know, huge floods. And I think here we sort of imagine that we're not part of that system somehow. It's, it's um, yeah, it, 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 it's getting the people who are supposed to be looking after our interests, um, caring about this kind of stuff as much as the people they're supposed to be looking after. Do a couple more, have we got any? So you mentioned quite a lot of uh, scientific depth for different species, and it, for some you definitely could come further, and, and some maybe not so much, so I was wondering how you, how you prioritise. Is there a, perhaps an element of favouritism, or is uh, it incredibly unbiased, as it were? Oh, no, I'm incredibly biased. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I mean, it's what went well. Watch, because, you know, there are obviously, like, with wildlife filmmaking, you only see what went well. You don't see all the shoots that went... OK, I'll try, I'm trying really hard not to swear. Uh, that didn't work. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, and, and you, I'm always going to err towards stories. I mean, it's the, the beauty of this because I'm completely in charge. I could do what I want, which is quite nice. So I was able to kind of do species I've always wanted to do. Um, so it's, yeah, it was trying to pick out the stories. I mean, like when you boil it down to it, British fish don't have that many behaviours. It's, it's breeding, it's moving and it's eating. That's pretty much everything we, we've shown there, more or less. So it's quite repetitive. So for an hour, you don't want just an hour of fish sex. Generally, or well, some people <laughs> <laughs> might do, but um, you know, so you need to mix it up and get different stories in there. But it's hard when you've only got a few. When if you look at the the plethora of behaviours of mammals and birds, there's a lot more to work with there. So that that's trickier from that that standpoint. But um, yeah, hopefully that answers it. Sort of rambled. <laughs> we got maybe one more. Go on, Pete. Um, yeah, fantastic film again. Um, as you know. Um, Sometimes when it comes to filming certain behaviours, uh, from a welfare and logistical viewpoint, sometimes it is easier to do it in captivity. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's fair, but um, I just wondered if there was any more that's filmed in, in the aquarium. Um, obviously, if you film even less, even more in the wild, even further, like, oh, well, not to you. Uh, but just following on from that as well, just walking around the exhibits here today on that theme, what role do you think public aquaria can have in spending work for exhibitions, considering the football they have too? It's a really good question, actually. Like, I think. Um, because most people aren't as bonkers as me to jump in a river, like an aquarium is a great way to get people to, to see fish. I'm, I'm, I'm really up for aquariums. Um, I think not to have a dig at Bristol Aquarium, it'd be nice if they had some freshwater natives, it'd be good if they could get a few of those in. Um, but yes, yeah, so marine gets a little bit of a bias, but um, it'd be nice to get more of that. So no, I think it's a really powerful tool because you know most, most people aren't gonna be going in, in rivers and, and lakes and you can see so many species, like I mean, well like here they've got wreckfish and, and stingrays, which we do have in the UK, but the chances of seeing one in the wild, unless you're may, maybe an angler, and even then, chances of catching one are pretty slim. So you can see, spi see fish that are around our coastline, which you're probably not gonna see any other way. So um, I think that it's a powerful tool for conservation in the same way a zoo is, really. And they do captive breeding as well, like for, I know, um, is it long-spined seahorse? One of the seahorse species, like they've successfully bred those in captivity again. So. They definitely have a role, role to play. I think. Maybe one more. Should we go for one more question? Got one for Jeremy. I've waffled enough. We've got a question for Jeremy? Go on then. So, 
Jeremy, obviously yourself and Jack, you're both avid fishermen, but you also really love fish and the wild environment. Being a fisherman myself, I often feel a little bit conflicted, um, but obviously it's people like you two are here making this film. Um, what do you kind of say to people that sometimes might struggle to understand how you can love the, the underwater environment and the fish, but you also fish at the same time? Uh, yes, exactly. I mean, that, that is sort of, that is seen as fish bothering by, by some <laughs> people. Um, but, I, but I think, you know, what people need to understand is, is that um, you, a, a lot of us just, you know, I think all of us, by means of our, our normal way of life, you know, the stuff that goes down drains and all the rest of it, you know, everybody collectively poisons fish and and but because you know that's that's it's invisible it's out of sight it's, it's quite easy possibly to point the finger at, at, at anglers and very often anglers are the people drawing attention to the fact that there's dead fish here and we need to do something about it um, but I think just going back to the last question the thing about uh, I mean a lot of the time now I probably spend more time walking by water without a rod I just um, fish spotting you know everyone knows about bird watching you know Fish watching is not quite such a thing unless you're unless you're Jack, uh, but it but it is a thing. You know, you can you can walk by a river and and you can you can watch for signs of fish and hopefully, um, you know, I, I'm I'm quite encouraged by by as I was saying earlier, people who can watch a film about fish. They have no interest at all in in, in fishing and and that and that does still get you know get them interested about you know here are these creatures with these 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 lives. Um, Anglers do have a responsibility to, to, to treat fish very well. And I mean, one, one thing that, that struck me was over more than 10 years now of making, um, making programs that involve fishing was be because we, we looked after them, we handled them well, they weren't out of the water long. Um, almost zero in the, in the way of um, any, any complaints. Uh, you'd think it would be possibly quite an easy target. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, set against that is huge numbers of people uh, becoming aware and, and caring about them um, so but, but it, yeah it, it is one to it is one to think about I, again it comes down to the fact that often the only way a lot of people are going to see them is, is you know, using the line as the sampling tool I think it's sometimes seen as us and them and it's interesting I mean how, how many people fish in the audience have interest how many anglers we got how many people don't fish but have some interest in fish okay a few of you but um <laughs> It's seen as sort of us and them, but I think that actually we've got a lot more in common than you're real. There might be one or two things that we don't necessarily agree on, but for the most part, we enjoy being outdoors, we enjoy the natural world, we enjoy the wildlife, and I think um, particularly like Don was saying about with, we need to kind of stand up and for the environment with MPs and whatnot, we need to sort of stand together and be like, we need to, to change something because it's, um, it's going down the pan quickly and we can, we can stop it, but we need to sort of come together as groups to, to do that licensed buyers as well we have quite a say in the environment agency and things like that and if, if we can see that they're not really doing very much yeah i mean there's a, there's a hell of a lot of money that goes in their pocket from us and i mean that, that you know, we've talked with our wallets as well yeah um, yeah it's, it's worth pointing out as well i mean you know what one of the people who's making the most noise at the moment and is really getting the whole um sewage question in the news is Fergal Sharkey and mm. I mean you know he the reason he's doing that is he's an angler and, I, and at the moment I think you know that's possibly slipped from sight but that is entirely the, the perspective that he's come from and, and the amount of you know of good that he's doing in the way of mobilizing that and, and uh, getting that sort of front and center at the moment um, you know that is that that I think speaks the force of uh, nature isn't he Fergal yes yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Think. Oh, right, one more. Go on, one more. Right. <laughs> I keep saying one more. This is the last one. Go for it. Yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned before about the pressure on the younger generation. What is one piece of advice or just something you've learned in your career so far that you would want to pass on or share? Oh wow. Okay. I'll let you go first, Jeremy, while I think of something <laughs> intelligent to say. Um, one thing that springs to mind for, with me is, is how things have changed in my lifetime, you know, not for the good. Um, 
I have been very lucky to go to places and see things that if I was starting out now, I, pro I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't see. And so I think it's almost, um, the, you know, the history of the human race is, 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 uh, is well, in one sense, it's, it, it's very long, but things, things are happening very quickly. Um, so it's almost, um, have, have a, try and have a sense of urgency. I mean, how do, how do you get that concept across to, to, to young people? But I think there is, there, there is a sense of urgency. And in a sense, our, our generation have not done a, you know, we're hopefully we're preparing the ground, but um, the, the young generation now have a tremendous job ahead of them. Uh, and it's, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's urgency. It's much more important now to, do things than it than it was for us. I think we've sort of got away with it, um, our generation, up to a point. I think things are more um, easier to document now as well. So when before, like you know, if you wanted to do aerial shoots or underwater shoots, that would have cost thousands of pounds. Whereas, pick up a GoPro, pretty cheap now, or even drones are pretty cheap. So if people want to tell stories themselves, I mean, you know, like I've told this myself. You haven't got to necessarily wait for someone to do it you can even I mean even not to this extreme you can just do it on your phone you know people yeah. TikTok and Instagram and other things although they can just film these bits and bobs and get that message out I mean there's some fantastic campaigners out there and they're not necessarily going to the lengths of this they're just literally showing shocking footage or um, and documenting it all because you need to document it to, to get that um, I mean there was a there was one literally a couple of days ago in North Yorkshire I know Marina Gibson is a well-known female angler. Is I can't remember the name of the river. It's a river in Yorkshire, but what was that, sorry? Skeven Beck. Dead, completely yeah. dead. Yeah. You know, devoid of life now. So I think following on from there, I mean, another thing, because that's, you know, it, it's uh, documenting um, citizen science. Um, mm. You know, uh, I remember, you know, poking around in ponds, getting to know what lives in the water. Um, but actually, because you know, we're told we live in the, in the information age. One of the big problems at the moment is, is the, the the lack of knowledge about the the water quality um, in in this country, because largely the environment agency have been defunded. It's like, how on earth do you, you do you get control of things if the information is lacking? And what's happening is that is that general public are coming in and filling the gaps. And if you know, if you're a kid, that you know that can actually be quite good fun, you know, given the uh, you know g given the instruction and how to do it. One very good thing that's about to happen. This is really sort of almost hot off the press. Is uh, as some of you might have heard, there is going to be a GCSE in natural history for the first time ever. This is about to, to start, and I think that is a great thing because. Uh, you know, somebody like, somebody like myself, you know, you go through and, you know, you might do the, you know, the, you know, the biology, the chemistry, but in terms of, you know, all of that should have a foundation of natural history. And I think younger people these days are not out as much as they used to be uh, going back a generation or two. But I think that is something that deserves a, a lot of support. So if you're at school and thinking about what to do, ask about this, you know, does, does my school plan to do this GCSE in natural history? Because I think that could really tap into something. Um, so that, you know, I think that's a, a bit of good news that's, uh, you know, something, something good that people can get involved with. Can I add something? Go on then, Kevin. <laughs> Great. Well, I think we'll we'll cut it there then. And I think we've still got a bit of time in the aquarium, so we can mingle. In. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Um, but we'll mingle in the lobby uh, for a little bit. But it just 
Yeah, thanks for turning up because I didn't sure what it would be. Uh, so.